Several articles came out recently on factors that can increase the risk of a heart attack. Now we all know that stress is a high risk factor for a heart attack and a new Danish study shows the importance of mental vulnerability and how it increases the risk for heart disease. Well, another study shows how hair analysis can predict the risk of a heart attack, and another shows that high-stress physical labor can increase the risk of a heart attack. Now, with heart disease our number one killer, it's important to go over all of this, so we're going to start by defining mental vulnerability. Good place to start. Those are interesting studies, too. They all came out within just a, about a week of each other. Uh, and point out some things that we're going to highlight as we go through this little procedure here. First of all, what we're talking about is people who have psychosomatic symptoms or have stressful relationships. They're the ones that they're calling um, having mental vulnerability. And what they found after analyzing 3,000 fatal and non-fatal heart attacks, that those who had mental, mental vulnerability were 36% more likely to have a heart attack. Nothing to snivel at. So how is heart rate variability a good predictor to, to identify these patients? Well, there's a test that's not used very often in mainstream medicine. It's an inexpensive test. It's the most predictive test in all of medicine for all-cause mortality. And what this test is about is looking at the rhythm that the heart has. And if it's on a regular rhythm that beats like a metronome, you've got a big problem. So in other words, if you're stressed, your heart rate should go up. If you're sleeping, it should be a little bit slower. And it should vary a lot during the time that you're just breathing. And if it doesn't, that tells you that the heart is fixed in its capacity to be able to respond to stressors. It tells and, you you're a robot. Well, <laughs> it's like, well, it's just that the heart can't adapt. So how can you change it so that it can adapt? We have to be, have a healthy heart. So if you've got vascular insufficiency, like we have in coronary artery disease, where there are blocks, uh, you may have to do something like use a medication or to dilate up the arteries somehow, uh, to maybe do a stent or do a, a, even a surgery to try and open up those arteries. And that might do something. But once the horse is out of the barn, we've got a real problem. Wow. So how does hair analysis predict a heart attack? That's really interesting. You know, hair analysis has a bad rap in medicine. And, and I think it's just because the nutritionists are the ones who really are focusing on that. And nutritionists and doctors very often just don't see things the same way. But a hair analysis is a beautiful way to measure uh, long-term changes because hair grows slowly. And as it grows slowly, minerals and nutrients and hormones and enzymes get deposited there. In fact, so do toxic metals. So it's a great test for looking at toxic amounts of mercury or lead or arsenic or things like that. So in this setting where we have a, an issue that we're trying to look at stress and its effect, we can measure the amount of cortisol or cortisone, okay, that adrenal hormone that comes out when we're in a stressed state and see what the height of that level is over that three month period. So if you got say a three centimeter uh, growth of hair that's next to the scalp that you cut and send off to the lab, the higher the level of cortisol in it, then the more stress we're gonna be. And what that study showed, Vicki, is that the higher it was, the higher the risk for developing a heart attack. If you're lucky enough to grow hard. If you got enough hair. Well, I guess you could get it someplace else on your body. Yes, you could. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so um, usually we think of physical exercise as something healthy, something mm -hmm. good to pr prevent ourselves from getting a heart attack. Absolutely. So tell us about this study that shows that demanding physical exercise, like on a job, mm -hmm. can be... Um, it can, and something to increase your risk of heart disease. Exactly. And it comes as a surprise because we know that exercise is what we're trying to get everybody to do. Uh, that's why we're getting overweight and, and why we have this epidemic of type 2 diabetes with all its complications, like with a heart attack. But what the study showed is that the more you exercise on a job that you don't like particularly because it's a job that you just have to do, that kind of attitude that comes with it actually has negative effect on our bodies. And so they did a study that showed that the actual risk of people who were not exercising in jobs that had a lot of physical stress 
had 20% fewer heart attacks in people who did have these jobs that were at high stress levels. Okay, so in other words, um, if you do leisure activity, in other words, just go run around or play tennis or that's different. That's something fun. like that. And that's you're good enjoying it. And that's healthy. Work exercise but, is different. But if you have work exercise that's very stressful, say, for example, you're helping to build the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge or something, maybe something yeah. like that. Well, that would probably be a little stressful, especially well, if you were afraid of heights. Yeah, right. <laughs> but if you do that, plus you go out and you do your jogging or you go to the gym or whatever, it can increase your risk of having a heart attack by four times. Yeah. And yet if you just do the leisure activity, it decreases your risk of a heart attack 60%. Yeah. So it's a big deal. So we have to look at at the context of every single person uh, and know their whole life story, really, to be able to put information like this to use when we're making predictions. So exercise, yes, it's good for you. Stress, we know it's bad for you. And if you have a combination of, of exercise that's stressful and you're exercising too much and you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're in real trouble. And that's, that's the time that you want to try and look at making modifications in lifestyle rather than thinking about a whole bunch of tests, you know, that might be able to bail you out of trouble once you're about to have that heart attack or you've already had it.